assistant at UAB and on the farm. Got to know him when he was at Stanford and didn't realize that the academic piece at Denver is similar, not as strong as Stanford, but similar in terms of players they recruit and the academic standards to get them into school. Tiger Campbell and UCLA have the first possession. And it looks like Denver's playing zone to begin. Now they match up out of it. Pockets using the shot fake to get all the way home. Doing a lot of his damage in the paint this year. They started it last year by posting him up, putting him on that mid post area. And it's continued into this year. Last four games for Hawkes, averaging 21 points per and shooting nearly 70% from the floor. Here's Kasunas, the former Cardinal. UCLA up in ball pressure more than normal here, trying to speed up Denver, I think, get it, turn him over. Justin Mullen denied by Hawkes. So a bucket and a block. Here comes Bailey, trailing Tiger. Two-time reigning Pac-12 Freshman of the Week, Amari Bailey here. Spinning baseline, it's the lefty. And really important that Bailey continues to evolve. It's really not about the skill level for him. It's more about how he thinks the game offensively, understanding that he needs to let fly the catch and shoot opportunities he has. Terrific getting to the basket, but he's got to add that piece where if they leave him, he can knock it down from behind the line. A Dembona couldn't finish his first try. He too. Turn it. We're talking about UCLA winning the Pac-12, which they could potentially do and going far in the NCAA tournament. Bailey and Bona have to continue to improve every night out. Hawkes draws the assignment for now on Bruner, then Bona on the switch. A foul on the entry to Kasunas. Well, one thing to look at from Denver, they're not a great three-point shooting team. They know it, so they're trying to attack the paint, either with the dribble or with the pass. They get to the foul line a ton, 22 free throws a game, which is a lot. So UCLA's got to defend, keep them in front without fouling. Tiger able to dig it out. Bailey back to help him. Unfortunately, couldn't connect on that steal. I, I did a double take. I'm sure you did, too. Top two in the NCAA in terms of Denver's field goal percentage. Uh, free throw attempts and makes on a per game basis. Well, if we're at this point in the season and you're over 50, which both these teams are from the field, that's pretty good. Like, you're going to be a good shooting team, at least percentage wise. It's not like it's been one or two games. We're 10 games or so in. Short clock with one. Bruner could not draw iron. UCLA is just so sound defensively. They pressure you, they keep you in front. And a lot of possessions end like that. Tough, contested shots at the end of the shot clock. Tiger left alone on the illegal screen. Hawk has kind of ran through that screen. Really look at Will McClendon here. Got it. He hadn't set a screen. Like, that wasn't a screen. He was just running through. I think I saw that up at the uh, football practice facility on my way down from the parking structure <laughs> as they prepare for their bowl game. Tainamo lost the handle. And the second leading rebounder on this roster, pairing him with Kasunas. Good to see Will McClendon on the floor for Mick Cronin in UCLA. Really hasn't played organized games for over two years. And I'm sure there'll be a little bit of rust to be knocked off, but I'll be happy as heck to be out there. Not only the ACL, you see the brace on his left knee, but he didn't have a senior season of high school right. Bishop Gorman. Tiger puts it up for Bona. <laughs> Caught it on the seat of his pants. McClendon couldn't collect the hoop. Well, here early on, UCLA tried to force it into the paint, you feel like, because they have the size advantage. Toko Tainamo for three. It was a funny thing, you know, coaches don't want to hear it, but like coming off of finals week, that first game is a little tricky. I remember that, you know, you get so locked into what you have to do academic wise that it's hard to turn it back on, at least initially. I'm sure UCLA will get it going here after a while, but it's good. Jump hook in the lane. 
Scoring numbers come down a bit, but still averaging 14 per on the season. Oh, he's made a significant jump, but his numbers through through the first three or four games were absurd. He kind of had a feeling they wouldn't stay where they were, but he has definitely improved this year. More of an offensive threat, no doubt, for this UCLA team. Good movement for Denver. As soon as gets a deep touch. Yeah, he's a wrecking ball down there. Yeah, we saw that for four years. I'm sure in the Summit League, you know, he used to knock guys around in the Pac-12. Summit League, he's going to really be knocking those guys around. Got four games this season of 10 points and 80% from the floor. Seven career games against these Bruins. The number's not dazzling, but as Don pointed out, finishing his college career with an opportunity to put up some numbers. Nick Cronin going to his bench here early. Dylan Andrews in now getting an opportunity here early. His quicks are breathtaking. Same thing with him I was talking about with Bailey, though, understanding how you think the game, what's expected of you at this level versus what you could do in high school. He needs to continue to evolve. And these games, I think, are probably the most important for Dylan Andrews, being the backup point guard. You hope nothing with Tiger Singleton knocks down the three. You know, injuries, hopefully not, foul trouble, but... Dylan Andrews at some point this season is going to be asked to play in critical moments. So these games right now in these minutes really matter for him. David Singleton buries a three. Talked about the deeper rotation for Mick Crone and what it allows them to do, what they want to do, is be able to guard you 94 feet now with Andrews and McClendon. Get it, get it. Well, depth, depth. depth was a concern to start the season. If you were going to ding UCLA at all, you'd say, well, do they have enough depth? But with guys coming back, Etienne came back. Now McClendon, they have they have good depth now. It's just a matter of these guys getting back in rhythm, getting back into the, the flow of the game. Clark on the reload. Yes. Like right, you on the tee box, JB. First one out of bounds, second one right down the middle, right? A mulligan, he's one for one. That's right. Breakfast balls built into a noon tip. Yeah, it is noon, that's conference. right. Free throws for Ben Bowen, a redshirt freshman from Highland Ranch, Colorado. Always, the second one always goes in, right? Yeah, that was a range ball, and here's the Pro V. That's right. Striped it. Well, Bona has 23 fouls coming in. He's played in eight games. That's not a ton. But I think for him, as he continues to evolve, we keep using that word, it's where the fouls are. Like, you'll take foul like that where guys right at the front of the rim foul and put them on the free throw line. It's the over the backs. It's the touch fouls, setting screen fouls that you want to eliminate as this goes along. Another line change for Mick Cronin and the Bruins. Jaime Jaquez, Tiger Campbell. He told us re-entering. He told us the bench was going to get a big chunks of minutes. I thought it would be after they opened the game up, you know, and got a big lead. But it's right from the start. Kenneth Nuba picked up his dribble early. See? Found Bailey for the layup. You know what I'm saying with Bailey, move without it. Can't just ISO with the dribble. Move without it for layups. Move without it for threes. This is Tyree Corbett into the game for Denver. Offensive foul. The movement gets kind of stuck down here. Not sure what to do. It uses his dribble. Now he's stuck. Bailey just gets to an open area. Easy layup. So a double digit advantage for Amari Bailey. His last four games have been solid. 16 points per game, four and a half rebounds. Starting to hit the three. Hawkins has taken over UCLA's scoring lead as we imagined he would. He has gotten so good down there. Like last year against Pac-12 players, he was good. And now you see how easy it is for him to score when you drop down a level in size and talent. A steal in the backcourt. Bailey trying to save it. Nuba has it. Traveled as he tiptoed the sideline. Good effort, though, from UCLA. This is just a straight ISO from Hawkins. Top of the key. Gets him down, gets the contact, spin off, and finish. Right, good, good footwork down there to change direction. 
understands angles to get it up. He's not a high flyer, Jaquez, but that footwork allows him to get the angle he needs to score. After a sluggish start, UCLA with 14 of the last 15 points in the game. So I'm saying shaking off that, that finals all week. Good ball movement. Bowen hits the three. Spent a season at Wyoming before joining the University of Denver. Bailey using the Nuba screen. It's interesting, JB. It's kind of back in vogue for teams to down ball screens or ice spot ball screens where the guard gets on top and sends them to the sideline baseline. It went away for a couple of years, and now it, I'm seeing it more and more going through this non-conference season. Teams that want to keep that ball handler on the side. Any speculation as to why? No. Not really. I think one thing that is new, which I think some coaches figured out, is you down that ball screen and then switch it so the big who's in position on the isolation will take the ball handler and the guy guarding the ball handler will switch back to the screener just to confuse the, try and confuse the offense a little bit. A scramble for the rebound, won by Denver, initially off the Tane Amo miss. And then Tyree Corbett, who leads the Summit League with four double-doubles, having an impact off the bench. Really good offensive rebounder. 23 offensive rebounds so far this season. See Bowen there knocked down the three. Dad played in the NBA. Corbett at just 60% for the season at the free throw line. Philadelphia products started his college career at Coppin State. The transfer portal is alive and well, in case you hadn't noticed. <laughs> it's interesting to see it go in different directions, right? Players moving up a level, down yeah. a level, changing regions. More down than it used to be. It used to be you became a good mid-major player and you wanted an opportunity to play in the NCAA tournament, so you transferred up. We are seeing way more guys transferring down now for more of an opportunity to play at the mid-major if you were a high-major guy. Clark off the baseline play. I don't have the, the data on that, but just doing all the games that you and I do, it just seems like there's way more guys transferring down. Three-point opportunity for Denna. Ryland Turner, Mary Carmen Reyes, the game winner. A thrilling night to begin this week. And here we are on the hardwood. Men's and women's double header of basketball today. Pauline Pavilion. I mentioned JB, Denver's ability to get to the foul line. They are in the bonus the rest of the way. About 12 minutes left in the first half. Justin Mullins converts. He had 27 points in the uh, Big Easy Classic. That was over Thanksgiving weekend. Did it against the host team, New Orleans. Abramo Zunka, the freshman Italian. Off the bounce here. He flips it up and in. With individual offense there. These guys knew they were getting an op we're gonna get a more of an opportunity here this afternoon. They're gonna try and take advantage of these extra minutes. A trap, Bona deflects. Bowen maintains the possession. And Corbett couldn't cash it in. Tiger Campbell brings it for UCLA. Hawkins, two feet in the lane. That's too easy. Yeah. He froze the defender, though. It looked like he was going to dump it off to Bona. Froze the defender and scored it himself. Great spot for a trap. UCLA rips it away. Zonka, Clark. UCLA taking over on defense. A good transition to get it ahead. Clark with the easy layup set up by the defense. Tainamo looking for a way around Bona. From Helsinki, Finland. Well, Jeff Wolbrun wasn't lying to us when he said they're going to try and get it in the paint because that's exactly what they've tried to do this entire first nine and a half minutes of this one. Campbell rising for three. Rebound Zonka. Second chance opportunity. 
And a jump ball on the block. It'll go over to Denver. A lot of conversation this week about how Mick Cronin and Tiger Campbell are still sorting through his mandate for this season, which is to go score more yeah. than he has so far as a Bruin. The, the hard part with that, JB, and Tiger's a smart kid, is when you've played a certain way your entire life, to change it on the fly is hard when you're a senior in college. So the idea of, like, we want and need you to score more is great, and Tiger's capable of it, but you're going to see some inconsistencies with that because he's always played a certain way, and that's been, and that's been a pass-first point guard his entire life. Take a look at the scoring by year for Tiger Campbell, and I thought Mick was really gracious about the way he handled that. He's like, I I'm still learning along with him in terms of what's reasonable, how we're going to accomplish that. He boiled it down to this, though. For Tiger, he doesn't want him to hunt the hard one. Just make sure you never pass on the open. Right. And he's, he, he has improved so much as a three-point shooter what, since when he got here. And so I think, I think not only because he's a senior and they need the production, it's more that, hey, you've improved this much. Why wouldn't we want you to shoot more? Bona outs. Nuba in before the second free throw from Marko Lucic, a junior from Serbia. Denver saw a six-game win streak snapped on Wednesday. Overtime at Sacramento State. Catch a foul on Tainamo there, it looks like. Yep. Going to get to Numa. Nuba. Feels like more than a seven-point lead for UCLA right now. Yeah, hey, by far, the way Denver plays, yeah. right? They just kind of silently paper cut you to death yeah. at the free throw line. Yep. And I think that's why. Bailey from the corner. Orbit getting nearly 10 rebounds per game for Denver. Lukic against Campbell. Hawkes digging in and forcing the turnover. UCLA is just so solid. I talked about it earlier. Keeping guys in front. We don't need to gamble. We don't need to steal it. We don't need to block it. Let's just make it difficult on them to make shots. What UCLA's done since Mick Cronin got here, it's what they continue to do. You do not want to operate against UCLA's half-court set defense. At least not consistently. Hawkins lines up a three. Rebound down to Mullins. Never yet to get Bruner going. Tiger on him defensively here. Blanca thought he stole it. Instead of foul. And more free throws. Uncharacteristic of UCLA to be putting a team on the line this much. But give Denver credit. This was their game plan. They're putting pressure on defenders with the ball, with the dribble. And they've gotten themselves to the foul line. It's interesting that the moment of the season where Mick Cronin is able to and chooses to leverage his depth and play a deeper rotation happens to be against an opponent. It's going to pile up some fouls on your defense. Yeah. Sanka leaves there with only one. No meaningful foul trouble yet, but we could get there. 9-16 to go in the first half. Well, Denver's for sure with nine minutes to go in the half going to get to the double bonus at some point. Hawkins, Singleton. Bit flat on that yeah, three. Rare miss for Singleton, wide open. Usually when he's open, it's in. As soon as dribbles over to Bruner. We don't see very often, you know, Bruner's their leading scorer. Uh, a leading scorer come in here against this UCLA defense and go off. Like, I don't remember. Remember the kid from Long Beach State a couple years ago. Had 30 in here, but it doesn't happen very often. They've kind of, not kind of, they've kept Bruner in check here the first 11 or so minutes. Do you want to point out the Denver's without arguably its two best players? Tevin Smith was their leading scorer, suffered a gruesome injury, hasn't played uh, since late November. Tiger missing a triple. Kasunas boards it. Great decision though by Bailey to kick out on that wide open to Campbell. And then Coben Porter is another one, younger brother of the Porter family, has a couple of pros right now. 
a summer injury is going to cost him this yeah. year. So for Denver to be 8-2 and two with some success on the road without those pieces is impressive. Another miss from three-point range. Nuba has an extra possession. Bailey with 10. Good Finds shot. Singleton. Singleton doesn't get a lot of those, but I bet you now that he's a bigger part of this UCLA offense, he's going to get more as the season goes on. Why? Because in the scouting report, you can't leave him from the perimeter, so what's the counter? Back cuts for open touches in the paint. Nuba takes a charge on the screen. There. But I haven't seen that in a while. That board. Maybe something they do over at Mo Austin as part of their game day procedure that Maybe. we don't usually see. Maybe but because everything's compressed with the noon start. Maybe. They bring it over here. Bailey over the top to Tiger Campbell. Zone look here for Denver. Single team. Yes. He don't miss two in a row. I'll tell you that. He may miss one that's wide open, but I can. Guarantee you the next one's probably going in. Been way above 40% from behind the three-point line his entire career here at UCLA. Kachunas dribbles over to Bruner. Still looking to get in the soaring column. Sets up Lukic with the answer for Denver. Denver his answer here. A couple points in this first half. It looked like UCLA was going to blow this thing open and Denver is answered right back. Zone again for them. Bailey. Like it. Confident step into a three. To stay at this end, UCLA will keep it. Those are the ones I'm talking about with Bailey. Cannot turn them down. Fine, it didn't go in. The minute you start turning those down is the minute they stop guarding you, the minute advantage defense. Even with that miss, he's now hit five of his last ten. Yeah. I think it was more the mindset. It wasn't that he couldn't shoot. He just didn't shoot a lot of them. Didn't need to. So UCLA shooting 11 of 28 from the floor in this first half. Denver has certainly kept them off balance. And you don't know if it's because of the finals week, is it Denver's defense, but UCLA certainly not in a great offensive rhythm here this afternoon. He was already taken one of those for an offensive foul. This time he gets hit with a block. But Denver again, they're executing their game plan. They they want to get to the foul line and they're getting to the foul line. Good illustration there. They used to make Vernon frustrated about the call about UCLA's intention to cut the floor in half once Denver picks a side there. Yeah. His first point comes with 6.29 remaining in the first half. He's the leading scorer and playmaker in the Pioneers. Nuba will sit down for Mac at the end. You know, the other thing Denver's been able to do, pretty good crowd here for an early start. They've been able to keep this crowd out of it based on the complexion of the game. There's been no runs for UCLA. And so, Denver. Pretty much checking all the boxes they wanted here in the first half. Only down five with six to go. I'm pretty confident saying I've never seen as Tiger goes off one foot. A team come in here and shoot ten free throws before UCLA shoots one. Yeah. Bruins have not shot a free throw. But UCLA has also had a lot of easy looks too right at the rim where Denver, I think, could have fouled him to make him shoot him. Kasunis waits for the traffic to clear. All set up by Bruner getting in the paint. You're right, though. Denver can say, okay, we, we can give you some foul shots, but how about a layup instead? <laughs> Singleton attacks. Good Drops try. it off to Hawkins. That's what I'm talking about. Like, they could have fouled there, but they let him go Hawkins with the easy deuce. This press hasn't been able to speed up the game either. Hawkins with that bucket has 8 of the 29 for UCLA. This is Justin Mullen sending it back to Bruner. Single digits on the time. Inside, Good offense. corner. 
three. Exactly how you draw it up. Hit the roll guy. He's on balance off of two feet. Kick out to three. Open look. Knocks it down. Now Bowen came in as Tiger releases. Bowen came in 0 for 7 from the arc. He's hit two in this half in Westwood. Pretty clean look. Pasunas fires one. The Mullins. And the 17 Denver will keep it. The scores table's been busy. Yeah. I was thinking that. Mullins against Andrews, who stays in front. Ten left for the Pioneers. Bruner crossing over. Kick to the wing. UCLA made a miss. And Corbett over the back. UCLA going to get their first free throw here. UCLA needs a spark here in the last 423. What's it going to come from? A steal and a dunk? Something. Four-point game. A little surprising. After it was 16-4. Right. Bruins had it plus 12. Here's Clark at the strike. He's got seven in support of the eight for Hawkins. A couple of low impact scores. It's fun to watch UCLA operate. You look up at a juncture and Clark and Hawkins are both closing in on double digits for the first half. It's like you almost take layups for granted. You know what I mean? When guys make layups, it doesn't register that those are points too. You know? I know exactly what you mean. Looks like, yeah, he had four layups. That's why he's got 11 points. He's got a three on top of it. Here's Hawkins with Andrews. Bruins running. Clark with the finish. That's the spark I'm talking about. Let's see if they can maintain it now. Crowd up. Timeout, Denver. Trying to kill that momentum exactly, that the Bruins have right? Good timeout. UCLA, they need more of this if they're going to break this game open. Clark finishing on the other end. Got a good one here in Westwood. High school basketball team. Yeah. Is that, is that why they called me the White Shadow in AAU? Am I you? No, that was because you couldn't guard anybody like me. Oh, okay. UCLA's been guarding the Pioneers, picking up full here. Denver called a timeout to slow down some of the momentum the Bruins had built. And Clark looking to reestablish it. Just mistakes you don't normally see. Like Jalen Clark's arguably the best on-ball defender in the Pac-12, but doesn't foul hardly ever. Fouled there. Just anxious to crack it open, you yeah, think? That, again, like the focus of this week. You know, get finals done and get through all that. It's hard to recalibrate quickly. Mental fatigue. How did you get through it? Because I know you had some big performances coming off of exams. I did. <laughs> did you take the exams? Was that your secret? Yes, okay. that was that. Not I studying? Was, I was uh, <laughs> exam free while here at UCLA. Sure, that's not true. What'd you study? Psychology. How about that? That explains a lot. See how right? Campbell navigating that side ball stream. Andrews to Bailey. Finds nice. his way to the rim. His decision making has gotten so much better since game one here at UCLA. Credit to him and this UCLA coaching staff. Jump stop for Mullen, sends it back to Bruner. Down low, Kasunas, send two at him right away, now three. Nearly a steal, Bruner, scrapping. Finally a bucket for Tainamo. This Denver's had a, a really good game plan. They don't have the lead, but only down seven. You know what they have, though? And, uh, you know, Coach Wolverine mentioned this to us in our pregame conversation, an identity. Yeah. 
Yeah, why would why would you shoot threes if you're not a good three-point shooting team? Is another bucket for Hawkes. Double figures. Play, do what you're good at. There's a three. Have to let that one go and contested. Bailey pulls it down. Well, now we know why they attack the paint. <laughs> yeah, I mean their <laughs> their threes today oh, have yeah, come Bowen's from made a, a couple. A shooter who was three less. Coming to Pauley Pavilion. Campbell missing from the baseline. Bowen has the rebound. Throw ahead Mullins. He'll go after Hawkins. What a block. Timed it perfectly. Block without fouling. After winning the joust, kicks it over to Campbell. Andrews. Got it. What a sequence for Jaime Hawkins. That's the spark I was talking about. Let's see if they can continue it through. Lead back up to 12. Minute 40 to go. Mullins right back in there for two. Nuba getting heavy minutes here in the first half. You never know, right? And so you got to make sure you're preparing every day as if you might play more than normal. Andrews, freshman wanting more. Denver can finish his half two for one now. See if they want a patient possession or if Greener wants points quickly. Kasunis, look what I found. He's just a load down there. Defenders just bounce off him. Do you think he knows that his shoes are different colors? I'm not sure. Is he the only one with different colored shoes? Black on left, white on right. Let's see if he switches at halftime, okay? Let's check right. that. Have your people keep an eye on that. Nuba. Nice. Good patience there by Nuba, not to force it up there. Spun off the defender, laid it in. So patient, I thought he was going to get whistled for a three second violation. You have to really be in there for a long time now to get a three second whistle, right? What do we get one every five games, if that? Ten games? As soon as muscling two more. Oh, he's having his way down there. I think Nuba's getting tired, too. Who's that guy who said two for one? We've had like four possessions. <laughs> <laughs> Final second for Tiger nice. Campbell. Soft with the right hand. He's and the so Bruins go to the break. Plus ten. Campbell so good at end of clock situations. Executes there. Gets a bucket right before the horn. Picking up full. And it really didn't bother Denver all that much. Let's see if they change their strategy at all. Uh, UCLA. Definitely needs to keep Denver out of the paint. That was probably line item number one on the whiteboard in the locker room. With the Pac 12's all time leading scorer, Don McLean. I'm JB Long. David Feldman, our producer today. Dan Becker, our director. And a great Pac 12 network crew. Jaime Jaquez in double figures through 20 minutes. Finds Clark for two. How many times have we seen that today? Either Clark, Clark or Jaquez cutting for easy layups. UCLA finished the half, making eight of their last ten shots, hit their first out of the break. Dylan Andrews starting the second half. Watch the slip! Quick side out! I haven't heard if anything's wrong with Tiger Campbell or not, but Andrews starting for him. Kasunis turning left shoulder and missing. Second attempt rejected by Bona. Mari Bailey not starting the second half either. Singleton gets his spot. Hawkes in transition. Now Bruner's been kept under wraps. Only two points. He's the leading scorer for Denver on the season. Usually we've seen when teams come in here and their leading scorer gets bottled up, they get blown out. Hasn't been the case here for Denver. Tenamo with an illegal screen, spelling Clark. You see that a lot on the hand, dribble handoff. The big kind of turns their body into the defender chasing the guy coming to receive the handoff. It's Campbell and Bailey. Singleton looking to Bona. Facing up on Kasunis. Nice pivot. And a free throw to follow for Adem Bona. That was an interesting sequence there. 
Bona had his back to Kasuna, has figured out pretty quick. I'm not as strong as him, so I better face up and use my quickness to get around him. Nice play by Bona. He, he got his quickness to get Kasuna to shift over and then step back through. Easy layup and one. First bucket for Bona, second foul for Kasunas, the former Stanford Cardinal. And Bona caps it at the line. Uh, 16 now, largest lead of the day for UCLA. Defense has been much better here to start the second half. What a nuisance Dylan Andrews is on the ball, right? Got good tools. Clark gets a deflection, Kasunas. Barry. Denver will get it on the tie. -up. Singleton getting in there and digging in on the big and just ripping it out of there. Gets the hell ball. 13 left on the shot clock for Denver as they send it in. Takes a fraction of that for Clark to take it away. Uh, as usual, UCLA, when their defense rises up, is when they start pushing leads out. Clark with another. Good defensive play there. 13 points, creating his own timeout, Denver. Holly Pavilion in Westwood, where UCLA has scored the first nine points of the second half. Interesting, Denver's only played seven guys so far. UCLA 11 in this game. Justin Mullins, Good Scott Ann Strix. Singleton, yep. Andrews, Singleton spacing. Great decision by Andrews, though. Didn't force it. Probably could have put pressure on the paint and the rim, but instead kicked it out to a wide open three to Singleton. Corbett lost his footing. It felt like this building was about to erupt. And Singleton. Singleton usually doesn't miss those either. He gets guarded so tight now because of his reputation as such a good shooter. It's been open. Maybe that's the problem. He's too too wide open. UCLA has now made Don as many shots as Denver has taken officially. 23 apiece. The mid post area for Hawkes, so good down there. Looking for the and one, didn't get it, but still finished the play. Still Andrews, not Tiger Campbell yeah, on ball here at the one. You're right, JB. You pointed it out, Andrews. Man. That's how you pressure the ball. Full court. Denver with less than 10 to shoot settles for that. Clark one and done for the Pioneers. Hawkes on balance, falling away. Two more. I mentioned this before, JB, when we were here. Not that Hawkins doesn't look strong, but I think he's stronger than he looks. Never seems to get knocked off balance. Take a closer look at the defense of Dylan Andrews. How many times can you turn a guy? Make the ball handler turn? Look how far out Denver's now starting their offense because of his ball pressure. But... Like any freshman, this next possession just now got caught reach and picked up the foul. Don't need it. And that just allows Clark to hunt, doesn't it? Because the ball handler, the passer, is almost exhausted by the time he That's gets right. rid of it. And when you get exhausted, what happens? Decision making becomes now, poor. Now what can you create in a half court with eight seconds? Well, they won't have to. Bailed out by a foul. It goes against Andrews again. And here comes Tiger King. If you're always reaching, using your hands, you're probably going to pick up a foul. What Dylan Andrews will learn is, like, keep your hands in position, but then when you see the ball, you take a swipe at it. If you're always swiping at it, the, the offensive player knows that you're swiping at it all the time. So be a little more intermittent with your swiping of the hands to try and poke it out of there. Bruner with 12, now working against Campbell. Not a lot of oxygen to be found against this half-court UCLA defense. Good pass. Opposite to Bowen. Made a couple of threes in the first half. Tiger tips it to himself. 
Hawk has eight of ten from the floor, sets up Clark, turns down the three. Glad to see Campbell back in there when he didn't start the second half. He's concerned that maybe something was wrong. Bona went to the second side, over to Denver. Well, pregame today, there were a lot of tears shed here. USC at 143, they're going to have to win some important games because I think you and I were in agreement, along with everyone else, that they're an NCAA tournament team. But when your net's at 143 on December 10th, you better rip off a pretty long win streak. They're a tournament roster without a tournament resume yet. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Turner behind the back, spinning off Tiger Campbell, lost the handle. 13 left for Denver. Up next for UCLA, a couple of resume opportunities. Mm -hmm. At Maryland, ranked 13th currently. That's Wednesday. And then in New York against number 16, Kentucky, a week from today. You know, they lost to Illinois and Baylor neutral site in Vegas earlier in the season. Why do I feel like they're better equipped for these games now, going on the road at Maryland and one in the garden? I have a couple of theories, and I think among them are that the freshmen have grown up yeah, since that trip to exactly. Las Vegas. Exactly. I was just going to say that. It, and maybe the motivation of getting those two losses back with these two wins, if they can do it. Hawk is scoring more fluidly than maybe he was in that first month of the season. He just walks Mullins to the rim. Hawk is with 18. It's too easy down there. But they refuse to foul him, which is interesting. Sweet crossover between the legs by Bruner, but nowhere to go with it. All of a sudden, it's a 24-point lead. Bowen comes up short. Last touch by Bowen. So, so I think it's fair. I think it's fair to say, JB, then that if you take a look at their next two games and who they're playing, their defense. This is the UCLA defense we know here. The first five and a half of this half, and it wasn't really in the first half. No, Jalen Clark got a steal and a dunk. <laughs> he gets two of those a game at least. I think we're just scratching the surface of what UCLA might be able to do in a full court defensive capacity now. Well, I think they're, I don't think they're going to become that team that picks up full every possession of every game. But to have it in their but, arsenal. Yeah, to be able to do it now that you have the depth to do it, yeah. But mixing up defenses is what you want. You want flexibility to be able to guard in multiple ways. Pick up full zone, man, whatever it is. A rare uncontested layup for Toko Tinamo. Those have been hard to come by for Denver, and they get their first points of the half after, what, six minutes. Uh, UCLA can't start playing the scoreboard now. All these guys that are getting more of an opportunity today that we've talked about. You know, Dylan Andrews, McClendon coming back in. Nuba's played more minutes than normal. Those guys, this is an important 13-47. Mentioned that Nuba got a little fatigued in that first half. Good, good chance, you know. It's hard to simulate game reps in, when you're working on conditioning in practice or on a stationary bike. So use these minutes try and raise that level of condition. Bruins already one of the more balanced offensive teams in the country. Five averaging double figures to this point in the new season. Why, don't, why do I think that, that Bona is going to be in double figures before it's all said and done too? Shot clock violation. Bailey didn't see it. Just tack on. They are also first among all Pac-12 programs in assist to turnover ratio. That's a given. They just do not turn it over. It'll be interesting to see. You know, that's one of Mick Cronin's big things. You come to practice turnovers, toughness. There are certain things that are main mainstays for this program. When Tiger Campbell leaves after this year. How much will Dylan Andrews have gotten better this year about decision making and not turning it over? Because it's been a huge luxury since McBrone has been here to have a guy like Tiger Campbell running the show who doesn't turn it over. We talk about buying into the scouting report defensively. There's a leading score for Denver with his first field goal at the 13-minute mark second half. 
Tommy Bruner's had to work really hard just to get it across the timeline, much less get that up to the rim. And I said it in the first half, UCLA set defense. You're going to get some here and there, but you're not going to consistently beat them in a half-court situation. Tiger Campbell. Especially when they got probably somewhat of an earful at halftime, I would imagine. Good note in the L.A. Times recently about how Tiger's mother, Jennifer, and brother, Trez, recently moved from Nashville to Westwood to be closer for Tiger's final college season. After his own here, challenging Kasunis. Mullins out in transition. A breath of fresh air for the Pioneers. You score when they're not set. Get out, transition, beat them before that UCLA defense can get back. Campbell sets his feet and fires. Rattles out in the hands of Bowen. That's been a tick down in Campbell's three-point percentage this year, but... 36% coming into this one. He was over 40 last year. A feeling he'll get back to 40 at some point. Hawkes running with Bailey and McClendon and Tiger Campbell. Extra pass. Like that. Still looking for that first field goal on McClendon. I like that Campbell gave it to him though. Good, clean, wide open look. Tiger could have shot that. Nobody would have said a thing. Campbell sees the mismatch. Full 10 D. But it's just in his DNA, Don. Like, that's who he is yep. as a player. That's right, everybody, today. Since the break, Denver just shooting 3 of 12. They turned it over five times. Three of those have been UCLA steals. It's nice to know, JB, if you're Mick Cronin and staff, that if you play an okay first half, you know that if you get it up to the level that you're capable of, this is what happens. Like, all right, guys, we're just kind of messing around in that. Let's let's do what we what we know we're capable of, and you blow the game open in the first eight minutes of the second half. And you're not excusing any shortcoming from the first half, but you did kind of preface this by saying this is a tricky one to be ready for yeah. to be at your highest level. Team. Yeah, and I didn't even mention the Jalen Hill thing. It, there were some guys on this UCLA team that were really emotional during that ceremony before the game. And so that may have played a factor in it as well. well Jalen played parts of three seasons with these Bruins. Stepping aside before their 2021 run to the Final Four. Can't imagine them. Parents and sister with us today. Can't imagine. Campbell, one of those longtime teammates. Spotty McClendon. Goes to the left. Campbell recovering. Denver to the foul line. Well, Justin Mullins will be at the strike. There's some football news as we head to the weekend. Troy Taylor has been named David Shaw's successor at Stanford. Spent four seasons as Sacramento State's head coach. 30 wins. Three-time Big Sky Champions, three-time Conference Coach of the Year. Lots of ties to Pac-12. Inspired higher by Bernard Muir. Just this right here, JB, tells you how much more engaged UCLA's defense is. This is Denver's first free throw in the second half, right? <laughs> so, they, were, they, were, they got to the line 12 times, I believe, in the first half. And only their second free throw here. We have 11-13 to go in the second. It's been a big difference. No foul shots, no made threes compared to what kept them in it through 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. UCLA on its way to staying unblemished on their home floor. Apart from that short corner, spaces away from the zone. Could not hit the jumper. Andrews after it. Threes are tough, tougher off the dribble. They're equally tough with off the dribble backing up. That's a really difficult shot to Jalen Clarkson's shot. We don't see many actions like that in shoot around. Where a guy just crab dribbles. <laughs> right. <laughs> couple of steps and takes the shot. Best home win percentage last couple of seasons. So who's who with college basketball? Yeah, you'll take that. 31 and 2. Jalen Clark would have been better off 
backing up with the dribble, kick it to the wing, and then get it back. Yeah. Tough entry. Enter the thought there by Bailey. Please improve his the shot clock early pass right over the top enter the paint really needs to be from the side on a contested look a foul down as singleton to the Bruins Foul from Kasunas. We're not in position to go defend this. So I'm going to make sure they don't get the outlet yeah. out. Tell you what, watching NBA basketball this year, much better now that they've gotten rid of that take foul. There used to be 10 of those a game. Just because guys didn't want to sprint back on defense. There you go. On rotation, Jalen Clark. That's yeah, that the one. Is. Feet set, not backing up. Momentum going forward, if anything, and knocks it in. There it is again. Guy's unbelievable, his instincts defensively. I he knew he was switching. He saw the action going away from him. So he's like, all right, if I'm switching on the guy that's coming to the top, I'm jumping the passing lane because that's where the pass has to go. Good fundamentals, too, to have your back to the ball yeah. and know which hand you're extending exactly. into that lane. He's I hope that Jalen Clark gets good enough from behind the three-point line that he can play in the NBA because defensively, He's an NBA player all day long. Bailey got that deflection. Andrews Whoa. erased at the rim by Mullins. Here's a Dembona. Ball fake first, facing up. Tough to stop that from a Dembona. Uh, he's pretty quick. And if there's no help coming, he can get, create space off the dribble. And then because of his bounce, how high he jumps, you're probably not going to get to his release point. I'm telling you, let's make let's make a bet, JB. What's he at right now? Seven, Seven points per game. I say he finishes the season in double figures. I mean, he's shooting 68% from the floor, so just it's a volume matter, maybe more than efficiency, right? And staying on the floor, yeah, not not getting into <laughs> foul trouble. Jalen Clark. That's unbelievable. And he does it with a smile. You know, a lot of guys can do what he does, like they poke it away. Or he somehow comes up with it every time. Like that was unreal. Most guys would have just tried to tap that back out of bounds. He caught it and laid it up. Offensive rebound, Singleton. Bailey short on the three. Bona above it all. See, that's why I'm saying he's going to average double figures. I think there's going to be a lot more of that as the season goes on. First appearance for Pedro Lopez Sendincente. Over to Bowen here. Owen couldn't lay it in. We get foul shots instead. Andrews third. Watch Bona just get up above everyone. Once he gets used to the contact, the guy's trying to check him off the glass and getting around him. You ever play funnel ball? Funnel ball? Yeah. You ever seen the white shadow? <laughs> 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 Playing with the Dembona makes the rim look so much bigger, right? Like, yeah. why not you make it? You just put it up there yeah. in that big funnel, you're going to get points out of it somehow. Well, especially lobs, too. Just throw it up there anywhere, he's going to go get it. 
Long arms, really jumps and long arms, a good combination for a basketball player. Screen from Andrews, Singleton sends it to Clark. Eight to shoot. David Singleton off the crossover. Creating for himself. to the left too. Bona, another board. There's Bailey. Good How activity by UCLA. UCLA. Yeah. Good effort and activity on the old board. Singleton goes into the front row. Mind the cameras. David Singleton in UCLA in cruise control against Denver. Important and that you got to be good. I would assume that Clark and Hawkins are probably done for the night at this point. So these young guys, Bailey, Andrews, Bona, keep playing. Finish off this last seven and a half minutes. Yeah, see, that's what I was going to say. More of the same for 733, please. <laughs> Bona. Whoa. Oh, come on. No. No. A whistle that ruins a highlight. Called it on Singleton here. Uh, he was moving a little bit, wasn't he? But you still got to see Bona's head on the rim, <laughs> even though it didn't count. Art still hunting. 22 points. Tainamo spins off Bailey and lays it in. Bailey trying to thread it to Bona again. 20 just, on the shot clock reset. Just because Eastwood. that's supposed to be the action doesn't mean that you have to do the action, right? Sometimes defenses take it away, so now you have to go to what the counter is. And for that one, I think Bailey, even though they didn't turn it over, probably should have pulled it back out. Let's get into a different action instead of almost turning it over. Mullen strokes a three. Andrews, pull-up jumper. Exactly. Like, he could have thrown that up to Bona. Maybe it gets tipped instead because the defender backed up. Hit the pull-up. 13th meeting between Denver and UCLA. Denver's lone win came back in January of 1960. Kasunis, back to the perimeter. <laughs> Remember what I was talking about Went in the airborne. first half about Bona out. and the fouls? That's one of them where you're probably not going to block that three-point jumper. So just close with a hand up so you don't pick up the foul. Third personal on a Dem Bona there and take a look to see whether two or three free throws should be awarded. Pretty clear. This official review brought to you by Chai. Pat on the back from Kasunas, a veteran. Started in the Pac-12, now a newcomer. But your point, Don, is it's not his job to block that shot. UCLA doesn't need him to block that shot. Even if this was a, a three-point game, you shouldn't be trying to block that shot. I've said it ever since I've been doing this. It's really hard to block a jump shot, period. I don't care how athletic and long you are like Bone, anybody. So you just want to get them to miss. You close out, and hopefully they miss. But thinking that you're going to block jump shots and, and, you know, do it consistently, it ain't going to happen. More often than not, it's going to be what just happened, and now... You go to the bench. Matt Etienne and Will McClendon playing together. I mean, that's a win for UCLA, mm -hmm. given the path they've taken back to the floor. Assuming they'll play the last six minutes here, too. McClendon, his first as a Bruin. 
congratulations to him. You know, he's worked hard to rehab and come back from injury. Nice to see him back out here. What a great box to check before the Bruins hit the road. Kasunas on the roll. Bullies his way to the rim. Surprised we didn't get the old uh, flopper Rooney call on that one. McClendon kind of just fell down. It's flat. But, oh, but I'm glad we did. Let's just say that. Andrews pulling up again. Is Flopperuni still a Class B or is that a Class C technical? Is there a special <laughs> category? Uh, I don't think they've changed it to a Class C yet. Okay. I think it's in. I think it's in discussion. Tainamo that's happening. Etienne. One and done for the Bruins. Clinton's going to be really sore tomorrow, but a good sore. Right? Three point chance for Bruner. Take a look back at his first bucket. Well, I mentioned it earlier. It's just different playing real live action. You can't simulate it in practice. You can't simulate it on any machine. You just got to play. And there's his first three as Bruin. And be a little sore tomorrow, but I bet you'll wake up with a smile on his face that he got his first game action here at UCLA. Nick had some good comments this week about how confident he is in the career that Will is going to have here, but also cautioning fans about how gradual the build back will be. We know from ACLs from experience that typically it's the next year where guys get back to normal. The first year kind of feeling their way back, but then that next year is when you see the true player. Look where Tiger's finishing his UCLA career. Yeah. In terms of optimism and where that might go. But what Will McClendon gives UCLA, according to Mick Cronin, is the luxury to not have to play fatigue. Yes, they can be a full court defensive team as they've seen, but if you can still a few more minutes for someone like Tiger Campbell, what might he do in crunch time with a little bit more? And if you're a major piece of the offense, which Campbell is, Hawkeye, those guys, it is awfully hard to play 34 minutes at full speed on both ends. Like, not many have ever been able to do it, so you end up saving yourself a little bit. Most guys save themselves on the defensive end like I did. <laughs> and, Jalen Clark and, Ron. and so wouldn't it be better to limit somebody's minutes so that they play 29 minutes at full speed instead of pacing themselves for that extra five? You and I know that's not how it's been for Hawkes and Tiger to this stage of their UCLA careers. They have been among the minute leaders yes. in the conference. And that's no, that, that's any player. I'm not talking specifically about UCLA's players. That's across the board. Some took it to the nth degree, but you've already called yourself out. No need for you to take it any well, further. It, 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 like Tommy Lloyd told me, Umar Balo, bigger role this year, but not going to increase the minutes by a ton because he doesn't want him pacing himself. He wants him to play 22 to 25 hard minutes instead of being out there for 30, and he's, you know, going 80% for five of those minutes. I really like this mid-range game from Dylan Andrews. You can Houghton tell he's bounce. been coached up in that. Probably before he got here to UCLA. Another deflection from Clark. And that'll send us to a stoppage. 3.20 to go before UCLA can rack up its eighth win and head to the East Coast. Two. So you get four steals and only two fouls. He came in with 17, so 21 steals now and 21 fouls. So that's an impressive stat. It really is. Like, if you're that high level of a defender and you're up in guys defensively, but you're not fouling. We talk about assist to turnover ratio. How about steal to turnover ratio? His is almost two to one. Yeah. Typically, when Defensive Player of the Year awards get voted on, people go directly to block shots. It's kind of the pre the, the primary metric. Mm -hmm. But I, I would hope that who's voting for it this year will just look at body of work, and being able to guard multiple positions. Obviously, the steal numbers are going to be there. Well, let's just watch the tape and see who the best defender is, not who's blocked the most shots. Well, that's where I give the Pac-12 and the voting a lot of credit as Mullins hits, is I think the Pac-12 has gotten off of that. I think back to 
GP2, right? Gary Payton the second at yeah. Oregon State, winning that out of a primarily zone defense, I believe. Yeah, it was. Uh, obviously, I know your favorite in Pac-12 history is. Matisse Stiebel in a zone. From Washington. So those are a couple of, you know, wing guards, yeah. not necessarily shot blockers. Mullen's getting his, filling it up here late. Double-figure game at Poly Pavilion. Well, at worst case, he's going to be in the discussion at the end of the season for that award, no doubt. Andrews off one foot. Again from the mid-range, his whole repertoire on display. This could be a very good confidence builder for Dylan Andrews. Gets to 11 on 5 of 9 shooting. Was averaging 11 minutes per game before this afternoon. And so that's why Mick Cronin, I think, liked the opportunity against Denver if they handled their business, which they did. But what was interesting is he went to it early regardless. Like, they didn't have a big lead in the first half. You know, he went to his bench early when it was like a four-point game, and it's continued throughout. The difference is the guys who started the second half, which Andrews was a part of that, he started the second half, they raised the level defensively and blew this thing open pretty early into the second half. Nick Cronin, UCLA having won its past four games, racking up better than 81 points per victory in those triumphs, and that's going to grow both the winning streak and the offensive production today. Loose ball, rebound McClendon. Down to Etienne. Trying to get Mac Etienne in the box score. So far scoreless. Andrews, a deflection out of bounds. <laughs> Student section looking for Russell Stong's appearance. Seemingly most nights here at UCLA. <laughs> Bonus clapping, too. <laughs> <laughs> Your he must want him too. <laughs> <laughs> Tigers in there. Mick not budging. <laughs> not going to give in to the student section or Tiger Campbell. This is Corey Hess, a junior from Colorado. Giovanni Bickham also in for Denver. Oh, there we go. Looking to build on his three for three free throw performance so far this season. So Stong got rid of the cornrows fairly quickly. He had the cornrows going there for a minute. Went back to the blown out hairdo. Evan Manjikian, a freshman from Glendale, joining him off the bench. Walk ons to close out the final 60 seconds. Manjikian missed it all. Quick trigger. Get him up. Why not? James Sanders the fourth, another pioneer on the floor for the first time. Over to UCLA with 46 seconds to go. Well, a good win. Started off a little slow, but came out strong in the second half. And kind of blew this thing open. But now, a couple opportunities next week. Wednesday at Maryland and Saturday in the Garden against Kentucky. Andrews too strong there. Looks like he's going to finish with 11 unless he can get another one up. Stong retrieves. Student section wants him to pull it from there. Etienne screening. They were in drop coverage. He should have pulled that coming over the top of the ball screen. There you go. Here's the one. Shot clock turned off. A miss from the Pioneers, a rebound for Andrews and UCLA by a score of 87-64, improves to 8-2. and two. Uh, Again, strong effort in the second half, especially on the defensive end. Great to see guys get more of an opportunity here this afternoon, more minutes, to just to keep to add to that depth of UCLA. Great to see Will McClendon out there knocking down his first shot as well. A couple good days of practice, I'm assuming, and then two quality road games next week for UCLA. Hawk is there with 18 points on just 11 shots.